it's 90 pounds. Okay, hard. so, sorry about that. That was a um, leaf thrower. Um, next, I'm going to show you a thing called a slate and stylus. This is a bigger version of what I'm going to use. I'm not going to show you this today because it doesn't really fit in with this video. I just want to show this to you in case maybe you do know Braille, you are looking for a way to continue to practice Braille, or really just want an old school feeling of writing. This is kind of the closest to handwriting that you're going to get doing Braille. Now using the slate and stylus is a process that you're going to have to learn because you have to put things in like if you know an A is dot one, you have to you have to write it as like a dot three, and you write <laughs> going right to left so you can bring it over and read it. I'll explain it in another video. I'm just showing you that the, this is an option, just because some of you you know may not know that out there. And the the paper is what kind of paper is this? Ninety pound cardstock. It's ninety pound cardstock. That's the same as roll paper. Go get it cheaper unless there's you know. If you're at a school or university and they're getting your roll paper for you, fine. Otherwise, you know, be economical. Um, so the slate and stylus that I'm going to show you, I really like to use for index cards. And you can use, I'm going to use plain white index cards. But if you have usable vision, you might want to get different color index cards. Maybe you can see the color, but you can't see your cans of food. Okay, put your vegetables in in pink, or maybe you um, you do canning, or you do herbs, or you do spices, or whatever. If you have something that you make categories for, and using an index card like around a rubber band is a convenient way to, to label some containers, use that. Use the fact they come in different colors, or or anything. If you can't see it, or if you, you know that's of no practical use to you, then by all means, get the white index cards and off you know off you go. So, what what you might do is, I like beans. Now I know this is a can of beans, but let's say I didn't. You know, I would take my handy dandy, my handy dandy little thing here. I'd go into my app. product and it's not working okay let's see I'm going to close out of this because it's not working we're just gonna go back into it all right document person currency soon cream actually is not working for some reason right now. Usually I promise you it does. It's just... Ah, here we go. Okay, it didn't work under product. It does work under short text. It's telling me it's free fried beans. You know, technology isn't great. You're gonna have to troubleshoot and play with it. But it is free fried beans. It does know that we can, we can all label happily now. So, Turn off my voiceover so it's not going on. So we're going to take it. We're going to open this, the little slate and stylus, which if, if you've never seen or don't know what a slate and stylus is, it's a device that you can open and shut. You put the piece of paper into, you shut said device, and then it has little notches that you can fill, um, you can fill the little cells, and it has little notches where you can fill the different, the different braille dots. Um, I will describe it better in a in a better video, I promise. Um, so I'm taking my index card, I'm putting it in my slate and stylus, you know, and if 
if I was really um, doing these, this would be the kind of, the index cards would be the kinds of things that I would keep and reuse over and over and over. So I would, I would take time, I'd line them up, I'd make them look nice. You don't have to. Obviously, as long as it's functional and as long as it works for you, that's all you need to know. There are different shaped styluses that you can, you can get. I'll describe those to you after I do this. Um, the benefit is if you have arthritis, if you have something wrong with your, your arms, if you find that you just absolutely love slate and styling and that is the way that you're going to take your notes, you might find some more comfy. I mean, back in the day, people, <laughs> this is what some people used to take their university notes and stuff with. And I'm not suggesting anyone go that crazy and throw out the brown note takers. I'm saying if you're on an income or if you just need to jot something down quickly, this might be your way. You might find it therapeutic. I don't know. So I'm just going to um, put this on my lap. And I'm just going to put the word beans in here. So, B, E, A sign, N, S. And I have not used a slate and stylus in years. So let's see how it came out. I'm a bit worried I didn't. Beans. Can I beans? So then what I would do is I would take this, put it on the can like this, get a rubber band, boom, it's labeled. I can now reuse this over and over again. Um, I like to keep little index cards um, in in just like you can get the little box that people have for for keeping notes or for like an address book or whatever it's just a hard cup box you can also just keep them in a plastic bag i like to go with the box because it keeps the brill from getting worn down completely your choice you know there is another way to label things called a brill labeler now a brill labeler it's plastic it has a wheel on it with different braille characters but there's grade one some grade two the tape goes in this little compartment you can fill the compartment at the top you have a little slot you can fill you pop it up the tape comes in these little rolls and you you can fill a spot where the tape comes out and so you hold that part up, you take the tape out of its little slot, and you can, you can fill a little, um, a little uh, slot. And you, you just, you run the tape through this little slot, you close this part down, you gently pull on the trigger, until you feel the tape come out of here and you're ready to braille. This is called a Ryzen braille labeler. I don't have a preference in a braille labeling brand. I'm not trying to market for this. I'm just telling you that because the braille labeler that you get might be slightly different. That's all. Um, use whatever braille labeler you think works the best. I find them to be, you know, fairly economical. Um, so if you're going to be braille labeling, so now the way that you would do this is you just turn the wheel around you can feel where it's where it's um pressing it's the bottom the bottom of it there's this little slot and the character that's in this little slot is going to be the character that it that it's kind of going to write so again i'm just going to write the word beans so last time i pulled the trigger i pulled it lightly this time i have to pull it a bit harder And then I'm gonna find the E. C D E. E. Go back to the A. A. Now let's find the N. In. 
I'll just say bean. It doesn't matter. Okay, and then there's this little like weird scissors looking thing, which you'll know, like feeling it, it's the only thing that isn't real. And you use that to cut it. Then it just makes makes no tape. Um, oops. And then you just peel the tape peel the tape off the back and you stick it you stick it on the can. Again. It's labeled. Either way is perfectly fine. I because I'm cheap, honestly, and I I really try to be mindful about my use of products. I tend to um to use this more for products I'm gonna have a long time spices herbs um, something of that nature something that I'm going to get several months of uses out of it but yeah you, know, you don't have to and also if you live by yourself honestly a braille labeler or braille labeling things probably isn't as necessary I just know for me that living with people it's unrealistic to expect people to put things back in places where they go and things like that so I um, you know I would suggest at least thinking about it also if you have a child who is blind and if you're watching this on behalf of them put Braille on everything that le realistically you can put Braille on make it as accessible as normal as you possibly can for them I know it sounds silly I know it sounds stupid but as a sighted person you're able to go see it's a can of beans that's a can of corn you know strive for at least your house to be that accessible for your child have braille be no more different than print or anything else because if you treat braille as some kind of foreign hard alien concept that's going to be how your child you know treats it and again, and that's going to um put you know kind of a negative condensation in their mind about it so again the more normal the more mainstream that you can possibly teach braille honestly the better off you know you are you're going to be so we've talked about the the um braille labels these are just the different braille label styles this style it has more of a pointed or more of a place to kind of rest your finger which might be comfortable. Um, this style is round, and it's very similar to this. They're both they're both very round. Um, this one is more of a knob shape, and this one's more of just a big, kind of almost uh, eraser shape. They just come in different shapes, different sizes. Find what's more comfortable for you. You know, go for it. Again, I'm I realistically know that. You're not going to be, you know, more than likely writing with your slate and stylus for hours and hours and hours. But find something that's comfy. You never know when it might get you out of a jam. And it's just kind of, it's kind of just fun to practice with. You know. Okay. So. There are. We'll do the one. So there are different labels that you can use you can put your braille things on this these are rectangles and they have almost a keychain type of of thing they have a whole bunch um these might be good for labeling keys or just other little things that you might want to want to label um you know you you might have something very specific so just look, see what kind of labels, you know, are kind of out there. Like these come in different colors. Um, so again, if you have reliable color vision, don't be afraid to use it for your labels. Um, these are kind of like luggage tags is how I would describe them. And they're a square with a pointy thing coming up. You take the pointy thing, you put it through the hole, it makes a loop. It's like a luggage tag. This is what I plan if I need to label stuff in my garden because they're more they're more resistant. 
So that's that's kind of going to be my main plan for for these. But again, you might have something else. I might label things in the garage, or if you you know if you vacuum seal like your clothes, especially people that live like up in the north where you change your wardrobes, you know your summer wardrobe and your winter wardrobe, and you have the air vacuum bags. You know, that's where something like these little tags that are more like keychains come in handy. Um, you know, just try it. It's, it's, uh, trust me, the ability to know what stuff is without having to go grab a sighted person or open your stuff to find out is, is good. All right. The last thing that I have to show you are just bump dots. And some people, you can also use puff paint because puff paint puffs up and you can fill it. You can also go with bump dots. And these are just little dots. They, they look, they feel different. So again, if you are low vision and you do have some usable vision, or if your vision is light dependent, or if you are working with kids, or if it is your child and maybe they are losing their sight, you know this this is a good transitional product because you can also again use it for totals um you know i would use these for like the oven or for the stove um anything involving knobs is very very handy just to be able to line things up conceivably you could also if you really wanted to i guess put them in different patterns um that wouldn't be my first choice of it but maybe maybe you're working with younger kids maybe you know you're working with a two-year-old or a three-year-old there is some you know practical applications there possibly get creative find out what works for you i'm in no way an expert on you your situation your child your client anybody else's situation Everybody is an expert on their own life and on their own blindness and on their own abilities. My main goal is just to show you what products are available to you, to give you some kind of idea of how I might go about using them. But I guarantee you, there are people out there that are gonna watch this and say, well, why didn't you just do that? And they're right, you know, there's, there's a million different ways to do the same thing and there's people that have had much better ideas than I have had. So, I mean, if you, if you think something's going to work for you, do it, try it. If it doesn't work, oh well. Um, my main thing is, before you go out and spend a lot of money on something, see if you can find a, a more affordable option. If there's something that you want to know how to do, need to know how to do, if there's a problem you're having. If you can't figure out how to do a daily living skill, let me know. I'll try to problem solve for you. And you know what? I probably might not be the one to come up with the idea, but I will ask people. I will help get you a think tank of people to, um, to come up with a solution. There's a lot of free apps for the iPhone, for Android. I'm going to try to get a Google phone and an Android phone just so I can look at what apps are available because I have to be honest with you, I've had an Apple phone for so long that I'm, I don't know what is all available that isn't Apple. Um, I do know that Android and them are making leaps and bounds about what they have to offer. You know, so by all means, if you have any really usable apps that are Android or Google friendly or whatever, let me know. I'll be more than happy to at least talk about them or point people in the right direction. So um, as always, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to leave commenting open on this video or not just because um, I'm kind of busy and checking up on comments as they start coming in, it, you know, it would be very time consuming and I want to make sure I don't miss anything. So if you have something really important or any burning questions, you can email me at blind, B-L-Y-N-D-D-E-1, at gmail.com. I'll be happy to try to answer any questions that you have. If there's any products that you want to know specifically about, let me know. If I don't know about the product, I will either talk to somebody or I will have someone make a video or do an interview or something about a product. If there's any basic skills that you want to know how to do, let me know. Um, 
I will hopefully in the next few videos be covering um, dog guides, the process of getting dog guides, some of the laws and misconceptions about dog guides. Um, if you have any questions about that, let me know. I will also be covering um, canes, some of the different um, philosophies behind canes. Now, I'm not an O&M instructor. I do not pretend to be an O&M instructor. Please, if you need a cane, get in contact with a certified, um, well, not, not necessarily certified, but get in contact with a competent orientation and mobility instructor because I can tell you that O&M is one of the biggest hindrances in people feeling like they can go out and be independent. If you are struggling with O&M, talk to somebody and practice. Those are, and I know that sounds very patronizing, but that's all you can do. If you have a child, let your child practice with their cane. Yes, I know it's scary. I know it's terrifying. I know you're thinking about the 100 million, 52,000 billion, trillion, kajillion different ways they might fall, twist their ankle, get hurt. Oh my God, there's steps. It's okay. I promise it is okay. I have traveled internationally using a cane and using a dog. I've survived. I've lived to tell about it. It'll be okay. But please, you have to let your kid do it because you really don't want to be going to your kid with to college or out on a date when they're 26 because your kid didn't run across the street. So anyway, thanks. Um, hopefully this helps somebody get in contact if you feel like you have any questions.